what an army could not do you would think a woman did it it's not a woman that did it money is what did it Samson down. I know you say it's Delilah, but it's not really Delilah. It was money. The Philistines called Delilah and said, listen, there is a man who has become a judge over Israel. This man has mysterious strength, mysterious strength that one man can use the jawbone of a donkey and kill 3,000 Philistines. What army will stand before that man? We want you to please, we will give you money. Can you help us to find out the source of his strength? And if possible, destroy that man for us. Ladies and gentlemen, what a lion could not do, what a bear could not do, what an army could not do, you would think a woman did it. It's not a woman that did it. Money is what did it. If they had met her and said, can you be a participant in our agenda? Go and kill Samson. She probably would have insulted them and walked out of that place. But when they brought money, she said, all right, let's sit down. Let's talk. What do you want? You want to bring down Samson? It's difficult to, how much are you going to give me? Because Samson is not just a, this somebody that taught the lion. That means I can die in the process. This mission is a risky mission. If he killed the lion, I mean, use a business sense. She will negotiate as a businesswoman. You think she would just receive peanuts for the risk of killing Samson? You know what it takes to kill Samson? Find out how many times she tried and failed. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And he got up and he said, you lied to me again. I don't know what, well, anyway, we'll leave that for another discussion. The most important thing is that Samson eventually went down. Are we together? Many times, do you know if Samson realized, I don't know what really happened to him. Maybe it was an attack. But if, if, imagine, listen, listen, listen. Imagine that Samson eventually got angry and looked at her. A lion samson toy a lion toy a bear defeated the philistines removed the city gate not the door to your house the gate to a city that people use cranes to carry he he carried it and then went up a mountain dropped it there if you were asked to go and fight such a man wouldn't you turn and look at the person who sent you and say is this how you want to kill me so imagine but with all of that when money came, he said, clear the way. Let me show you the power I have. I don't talk, but I move things. Money for you. And Delilah said, all right, since you brought the subject of money, I can take the risk. Finally, Samson revealed the secret. My glory and the power is in the covenant that is captured in my hair. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He got up. The Bible said he shook himself as before. This time around, money had gone forth. And notice the moment they discovered, after she shaved his hair, the next thing that happened was his eyes, not his hands. Vision was what was taken away immediately. His eyes were plucked out. When his eyes were plucked out, the devil did not want to remove the hand because he would still be useful for the devil. And you see what a great man, a judge, a man who was dreaded by the, some of the best armies in the dead world, he became one who was going around threshing in the prison. He was bound with fetters and his assignment was to go and be grinding. Can you imagine? Reduced from a place of honor using the tool of money. I'm praying for you. Whatever has reduced you, to a place of shame and mockery reduce your family ordained for greatness but brought down because of the absence of economic resources may my god who is the lifter of man in this season that the church is stepping into in the name of jesus may god prosper you for greater works may my god prosper you for greater works 
Please sit down. The force of wealth and abundance. Number five. Are you ready for the fifth force? The fifth force that is responsible for greater works, my God. I really believe that this word is entering someone's spirit. That you are getting, there is a holy anger that is coming upon you. That when you get up, you will coordinate all these forces and your life will become a sign and a wonder. The fifth force that is responsible for exalting and releasing Jesus, revealing him to the world, is called the force of influence. Write it down, please. Influence is power. The force of influence. The force of influence. Influence is power. Please write it down. Influence is great power. The force of influence. Influence, like money, are related. They shape civilizations. They define people's understanding. They define people's thinking. They define people's values at any given point. Can I tell you? Our world today is not just going at the mercy of time. Our world today is a reflection of the mindset of certain influential people godly or otherwise from technology to sociology to the language we use the way we raise children the way family is run are we together now the way ministry is run the way businesses are conducted civilization influence literally shapes civilization what does it mean to influence number one the capacity to have an effect influence is defined as the capacity to have an effect on the character perceptions behaviors decisions and the values of another i will take it again influence is the capacity to have an effect whether positively or negatively an effect on the character on the perceptions on the behavior on the decisions and on the value of another when you have an effect on the character the perception the behavior the decisions and the values of another you are exerting influence upon that person one last time the capacity to have an effect on the character, number one. Number two, the perception. Number three, the behavior. Number four, the decisions. Number five, the values of another is called influence. Please look up. This concept of influence is very powerful and is very profound because you see, a handful of people historically and even now are the ones who are always responsible for shaping and defining the narrative of a civilization are we together now that people a crowd of people will usually model their lives after an individual or a set of individuals that they consider to be worthy of emulation they call them all kinds of names role models some will call them celebrities some will call them in influencers some will call them you name it you know all the, the names and unfortunately some of these people have been positive role models in terms of bringing values that shape society properly but many of them sadly have been very wrong and destructive models there are children today who have no business learning certain things except that someone they admire you see the psychology of influences the moment you like someone and he becomes a reflection of your aspiration you will copy everything you can see and find in his life good or bad because the assumption is that whatever he is doing since he has that result to show it must be right are we together so when Satan wants to destroy a generation he does not go after everybody what happens is that he builds certain people through covenant 
backed up with excellence and an indoctrination that makes them know that they are pro-Satan, antichrist, vocally so. And then when he brings them, when that negotiation is done, then he will exalt them and give them the leverage of influence. Are we together now? And from that standpoint, they begin to sell certain value systems. And as ugly as some of those value systems are, you would think they should be so pungent and intelligent person should reject them. But never downplay what influence does to a man. Influence can make darkness look like light. Greater works on the wings of influence. There are many people today, did you know, once upon a time, have you noticed that generally speaking, we speak better, our, our generation communicates a lot better. Not necessarily because people have gone to more schools and learned, it's simply because the internet has afforded people a greater opportunity to hear and listen to communicators. And that has automatically improved people. You listen to our children, when you hear our children speak, you wish you were them. They speak intelligently, they will correct you. For I, I had a, an experience with one of our lovely children. I was calling everything that was round orange. So one time I was at the rotunda and I said, wow, this is orange. And she tapped me. She said, it's not orange. I can't remember the name she called it. And she was right. Ladies and gentlemen, O is for? That's what you were taught. Anything that is O is orange. But our children now, you can imagine they will correct you and say no no this is this is orange this is this one this is this one that is the level of advancement courtesy influence children learn now at a remarkable pace because they have audio visuals that help support their understanding pictorial representations of the things biology used to be a nightmare chemistry physics but now children laugh while they are learning when they fail, the teachers call them and say, were you in your right state of mind? Are you okay? We can repeat the test. You know what happened when you, when you were writing your test. You carry your result and start crying before you get home. Because you know exactly what will happen. And what you are expecting is exactly what will happen. I leave you to guess whatever it is. I will not say it. Oh, yes, you know. You, you knew exactly what was going to happen. Now results are released in e-versions. You don't have to wait, join any queue and do anything. I'm just saying that influence shapes civilization. Are we together? Very, very powerful and profound. It then means that if, we, if believers are going to do greater works, we must trust God for grace to ascend heights and realms where our life becomes visible and clear. Are we together? In an elevated platform where people can see the life of God in you. I like Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 16 is the most concise capture of the confluence, the, the, the whole idea of influence. Jesus says it this way. Ye are the salt, Matthew 5, 13, of the earth. Ye are the salt. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what salt is able to do. One pot of rice does not require one pot of salt to taste well. Are we together? Look at the ratio of the salt that must be added to a pot of rice to make it taste well. Say influence. So when you see a bag of salt and a bag of rice, you are not holding the same thing. If you mix them ratio one to one, you destroy that meal. Am I right on that? So, light is even a greater expression of influence because light does not have to be everywhere to shine everywhere. Just put it at one point and give it room to shine and it gives light to everyone in the room. It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Watch this. The light is put on a candlestick and kept on a bushel and the whole room is illuminated by that light and Jesus says you are that salt don't say we are few don't say we are few five people who are salt indeed can rewrite the narrative of a generation am I right on that yeah five people and then he says you are light look at the Sun as we know every time I use the example of the Sun I learned the power of influence did you know that 
if you ask the sun what do you do about darkness the sun will tell you I have never seen darkness I don't even know it exists the concept of darkness is the rotation of the earth in a way that the sun does not reach it but as far as the sun is concerned from its creation there has never been darkness because from that standpoint isn't it brilliant when you are traveling especially transcontinentally you see the wisdom and the beauty of the sun that one moment you are living and it's night and then you are turning to the other side of the globe and then you are seeing the sun rising incredible profound you go to other parts of the world where at about eight or nine is still bright and then all of a sudden the brilliance and the wisdom of God no wonder he says you are salt and he says you are light most believers only know that they are believers but God is transiting your understanding giving you an, an apostolic perspective that you are salt and you are light please say salt, salt. say light. light one more time say salt, salt. say light that means in the midst of 500 students if you are the only one who is there you are enough to create that change salt for you the assignment of salt essentially is to add taste and then to preserve these are the two principal assignments of salt there can be a lot others of course but then to add taste and then to preserve and you see like i taught you here in koinonia it is never too late to add salt to a meal this is the thing about salt there are certain ingredients that if you do not add them on time, you have destroyed that meal. But even when the meal is already served at the table, you will still see salt. And if it does not taste, you can add salt and it does not ruin the meal. Profound. You can follow us at all our social media handles at Flaming Channel. Also, visit our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Thank you.